It's about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Beaver. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. What is happening? We are here for another edition of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, episode number 365. And uh, you know what that means? This is actually our seventh anniversary on air this week. I can't even believe that. Seven years of radio. Um, Not too shabby. Not a lot of uh, radio shows or podcasts last seven years, but uh, here we are to tell the story and it has been one hell of a fun ride. I wouldn't trade it for anything. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, A little bit different format today. Uh, We're going to throw a little bit of dirt in with a little bit of horsepower. Uh, A couple of really long interviews today. We're going back to the roots. Long format Uh, We're going to have to chop them up and take a couple of commercial breaks, but uh, rolling right out of the gate in this next segment with a good friend of mine, Don Schumacher Racing top fuel pilot, Leah Pritchett. And uh, Leah and I caught up earlier this week for about 40 minutes on the phone and uh, amazing interview. She talks, uh, she goes pretty deep, man. Uh, You know, talks about her life and, uh, you know, some of the struggles and uh, it's a really, really solid interview. Thank you guys are going to enjoy it. So that's going to be hour number one. Then we roll into hour number two. Uh, We got a two segment interview with my boy, Wayne Matlock. You know him from the Baja 1000. Yep. That guy that took 23rd overall in a UTV and uh, also took uh, the overall UTV victory down there Baja. Dominating effort by Wayne Matlock. He's going to be on the show as well. So this is seven years. Seven years on air. Thank you guys for making it happen. If you haven't already, please go over to iTunes. Hit the subscribe button. If you're listening in national syndication, still go over to iTunes. Uh, Leave us a rating or review, but uh, definitely subscribe to the show. Uh, We're going to have a ton of content coming in 2019. I'll talk more about that later on in the show as well. But uh, hang tight. Enjoy the ride. It's going to be one hell of a show today. Seven years. Years. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side by side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount anywhere is possible it's more than just a slogan anywhere is possible with general tires wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra high performance offering all season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind general tire has what you need to get where you're going general tire providing anywhere is possible with a down and dirty radio show since 2012 when looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachran, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome, uh, I guess second time this year we've had her on air, but uh, Leah Pritchett, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, coming back on. Of course, thanks for having me to the Down and Dirty Show, and I want to I want to say happy birthday. Happy seventh birthday. Yeah, seventh birthday. It's one of those, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of a bit surreal, to be honest with you, that it's seven years. And uh, it was one of those we put it out, and uh, every year, you know, kind of our anniversary, put it out. Hey, who do you want back on air that we have this year we haven't had in a while? And uh, your name uh, popped up, and I was like, ah, oh, definitely, let's get Leah on the, on the line. Because you and I always, we've got a lot to talk about just because not only drag racing, but there's a whole lot more to you and kind of your background in motorsports. So I think, it, I was like, yeah, I think there's a lot left on the table for Leah and I to talk about today. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> fans spoke, and you are here. Oh, well, thank you. Yep, I'm here. I'm, well, I'm, I'm physically in, of course, uh, tropical Indianapolis, where Don Schumacher <laughs> Racing is headquartered. <laughs> It's a it's a cool 17 degrees outside, but it's, as you know, right, technically the off season and we're gearing up right now on both fronts. So getting our top field dragster with Mopar and Dodge and Penzoil ready for 2019 and then El Bandito, the championship winning factory stock uh, car and team ready to go getting ready for testing. So there's a lot, as you know, with, underway with partners and then with technology, budgeting, all the super fun stuff. But I like being able to talk with you, especially like right now, because we kind of get to reflect on everything we did on 2018. Yeah, well, in talking about that, I know what uh, you're talking about, sponsorship and everything else. PRI ties right into that. Uh, I made the call not to go this year because I had a, something going on with my daughter, and I decided, hey, I'm going to actually do something for her for once and didn't go to PRI. But I know you were there. and uh, um, Yeah, you. I think you had what? Like, I mean, I was looking at your schedule you posted on Instagram. I mean, it's a good thing when you have that many partners that want you in their booth, right? It is. You know, there's times throughout the season that we have dedicated – with partners, but I feel like PRI and SEMA too is our time to give back. Uh, I used, I remember going to PRI back in the day when it was in Orlando and I don't think I was barely even old enough to drive a street car, uh, hustling for, for partners. And you go there with your proposals and you go there looking for the latest and greatest, either technology or deals and discounts. And the way that I'm transitioning into PRI is I'm not really able to do that. Um, because there's there are a lot a lot of companies but more more than anything there's a lot of hardcore race fans that are there and it's our time to have those like one-on-one conversations and meet and greets and photos and really talk about the year or like me learn what they're doing that I don't have um you know that dedicated time at the track to so I really I really enjoy PRI uh in that standpoint of you know man being around just you know my peers racers whether it's USAC or Indy or Street or, you know, the epitome of motorsports lives at PRI. And if you didn't go to P- I mean, not you, but uh, if you weren't at PRI, what I love about it is there's a couple media outlets, um, you know, that are able to cover it. And, and so you feel like you're there. So 
I'm, we, we joke about it. We're like PRI. I'm so glad it's over or, but you know, PRI is a, a week that we dedicate to, um, to you're there at the show all day, but let's be real, you know, activities happen at night yeah. too. So <laughs> you, uh, you have some good dinners and, and you go to the clubs and you, you know, you drink and you meet other people that, you know, you've, you've also watched on TV or read about in magazines or heard about on your show and meet them in real life and mingle. Like, at the end of the day, it's all it's business and um, it's also a good time with your peers. Yeah. You know, and that's what's funny about PRI. And, and I've started going to this. I've gone a couple of times now. And uh, this is the first year in a while that I've missed. Uh, but like SEMA has become so, I mean, it's so massive. But PRI, I feel like it's a little more intimate. It's the endemics. It's the people that want to be there, you know what I mean, and and the companies that want to be there, and like you said, it, it's a racer show, you know, and I I feel like it's just a complete different atmosphere for me to be a PRI than it is for the SEMA show. I don't know if you get that same feeling. Oh, absolutely! From the moment you walk in, you're you know you're seeing everybody that are loud and proud with their own racing crew shirts or um or their cars that are on display, whether it be midgets or we had, man, I never thought I'd not see the day but i mean i had two cars there at pri there were both of the drag packs and one with the livery uh you know as a hint to what potentially we might look like next year i'm not going to say it over the air because those <laughs> that saw it at pri in the in the nhra booth with dodge know what i'm talking about uh but the famous el bandito factory stock mopar drag pack was at the e3 spark plugs booth which i you know it it war I really like when we're able to run a product and then win with that product and that car is in that booth. I mean, you go I like I said, I used to go to these shows to be able to to see cars that I never got to see in real life and, and talk with drivers or crew chiefs and I mean that was a, that was totally a highlight for me. So getting to be able to be in that position and uh and meet fans that like I talk with through Instagram all you know, all year long or, or you know, dedicated fans of tf4 or, or el bandito and you have them you know let them i brought the wally the championship wally like like nice. so you can you know hold it touch it rub it whatever uh, <laughs> it's um it's definitely the racer show now one and one of the things that i enjoyed the most was we had a comprehensive factory stock meeting with drivers team owners and then the the three oes of this is still a class that is in its infancy stage, but graduating into elementary, middle school, and it's, yeah. you know, some hard decisions need to be made. What is the direction of this class? Where is it going? How do we keep the cost down? How do we keep parity? And when you've got like the, you know, the three, the big three all in the same room that all want different things, you, uh, it, your competitors on the track and, I don't want to say competitors off the track, but we all got to come together and come up with ways to help make this class grow, help people understand what it is and, um, and how to do, you know, just a, an increasing better job um, of, and, and ask for what we need in order to put on a great show for the fans. Yeah. Well, and talking about that, I mean, you know, you, you, you run in two divisions. I mean, that that's enough in itself, but uh, you took the championship this year in factory stock showdown. I mean, how does that weigh in in your career? Cause I mean, here, you, you know, you've taken Wally's and that with, uh, with your top fuel car, you've, you've got victories there, but I mean, how does this factory stock champion or showdown championship? I mean, how does this weigh in in your career? It is, it's huge to be honest. It's, um, I, I don't have kids. I don't have children uh, yet, you know, maybe sometime later in life. But the one thing I guess I would compare it to is I'm sure maybe a lot of listeners should do. Maybe, you know, you do. You have children, so you have two, and you, you love them the same, you know, unconditional love for them, but you love them differently. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way, um, that's the way I feel. Now, my first championship ever of, of magnitude was 2010 Nitro Nostalgia Funny Car with Steve Kluger. And that was the last full championship that I had. That had been eight years and been chasing it with Pro Mod and Top Fuel now and factory stock. I mean, I don't like when people are like, oh, you know, I really don't know. No, right now, factory stock has taken the cake because I've been able to be so integrated with our engineers at SRT. And it's what I would consider at least a ground level. I'm two years into this program. Some people are just finding out that we've racing these, these cars, <laughs> yeah. um, but two years into this program, you know, we showed up with just a, a diesel and, 
and a, on a white small enclosed trailer, we're digging, you know, tools out of uh, cardboard boxes and, <laughs> and what would be, you know, spare from SRT to now beyond the, our own performance, trying to be the support for other Mopars and other drag packs and grow the class. So being on, on the inside and understanding the development with the new, with the new engines and blocks and, you know, potential direct connection has been gratifying. So instead of just driving the car and being able to ho- hoist that Wally, me and, you know, our two engineers and everybody back at Detroit and then Schumacher Racing, the two crew members that, well, it's really one that's here, uh, and learning from Kevin Helms, four-time Superstock World Champion. Like, it had, I have become such, I think, a better racer and even more understanding of the sport uh, by participating in this class. And that's really what I want at the end of the day. I want championships, but to ever continue learning. And that's what this has given me. And we'll be back with more with Leah Pritchett after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a -a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere is possible with a down-and-dirty radio show since 2012. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast. And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Right now, we're catching up with a good friend and uh, Don Schumacher Racing top fuel pilot, Miss Leah Pritchett. 
Uh, always fun having Leah on the show. And, uh, you know, this is this interview is uh, quite quite long. Obviously, it's not live. You guys know that by now. So, uh, you know, it's going to span three segments. Uh, if you want to catch it uncut, uh, definitely want to uh, tune into Project Action this Thursday. It's going to air this whole 40-minute uh, interview in its entirety. But uh, uh, continuing on here with Leah Pritchett. In bouncing back and forth between, you know, Top Fuel and, uh, and Factory Stock Showdown, I mean, this is – Two completely different worlds. You as a driver, I mean, you got to drive these cars completely different. How is that for you? I mean, do you, I mean, literally have to flip a switch. Like, all right, we're in top fuel mode. All right, we're in factory stock you, mode. <laughs> you are, you are exactly right. In, insane would be, I guess, would would really be the word I would describe it. I mentally prepare myself physically, physically and mentally for those weekends. And there were times at the beginning of the year and the end of last, I would drive three different cars when we did the Papa John's charity challenge. Uh, there's, we all have the same amount of hours in the day. And let's just say when things go perfectly, NHRA, the schedule of the day between all the rotating classes of alcohol, funny car, dragster, pro mod, super stock, super comp, top fuel, funny car, pro stock, you know, pro stock, bike, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if anything gets off by an oil down or a crash or weather, as a sportsman class, the factory stock showdown, we get bumped just like another sportsman class would. Well, that might bump it to directly before a round of top fuel or directly after. And we have a 16 car field and qualifying. We might have up to 30 going for this field. So we have to position, you know, <laughs> Of my Honda Grom at the end of the track with somebody <laughs> so I can go down there, you know, finish with fuel and way, go straight to the staging lanes. And this happened a, a handful of times at eliminations on Sunday where I get dropped off and am sprinting past my competition like Clay Milliken or Blake Alexander, whoever I'm running, Steve Torrance, they are already suited up in their car. The, they're finishing track prep for top fuel and I'm winding myself running this eighth of a mile from wherever I got dropped off at my guys are there holding up my gloves and my, my other helmet, like we're waiting for you and sprinting, getting dressed, getting in the car. You want to talk about like pressure on the guy that straps me in. He don't have any time yeah. to make any type of mistake. Everything's got to be ready to go. And then in that moment of now that, now that top fuel pair is fired up in front of me, I've barely got inside the race car. And I mean, by like 30 seconds or so, Taking these big breaths of fresh air, which it's like 104 degrees outside, right? It's either Norwalk or, um, or somewhere hot in the middle of the year. Yeah. And uh, reminding myself, yep, all right, left foot is your clutch, not your brake. Yeah. And I'll and I will, I'll dumb it down. I'll tell, I'll go through the whole procedure just one time. This is what I do for the burnout. You know, fuel on, clutch out, brake out, throttle. You know, clutch brake in. And I don't care how stupid it sounds. I give myself that one little last run through and then I'm fine. Um, but I think it's, it, it, it is quite a trip. And as soon as I get out of that, I usually have a, ro a routine back with my team, putting the car up on jack, draining the fuel, fueling up, packing parachutes. In those weekends, I don't get to do those activities. And, uh, and it kind of upsets the, the, the team. Does, the, my top fuel team does a great job of picking up, but it breeds a little bit of inconsistency. So I say, I'm so proud of my top fuel team for being the most consistent at being inconsistent with a rotating driver. Cause Anton Brown, he'll come in. If we get to the semifinal in the top fuel car, it is impossible for me to be in the pit and warm up that car. So my team's got to have Anton Brown warm it up and every team's a little different with how they do things and yeah. they go with the flow. So I appreciate the fans for being patient and my teams and my partners for being patient too. Yeah, well, and that's that's insane for you to walk through it because, I mean, I've done double duty in a day before, but it's running a trophy truck and a Polaris Razor, you know, and it's like even when I get in the car, it's like, you know, it's a long-distance desert race, so I can take a mile to kind of figure things out and get my bearings. You don't get that. I mean, it's a quarter mile in a few seconds. You don't have a, a mile to, to figure things out. You know, I'm not losing any time by getting adjusted, but you, it's just like thrown to the wolves. I mean, that's just crazy to have you walk through that whole process. It's like, wow, I, I don't think fans. And then some weekends, like you said, you add in, you've added in a third vehicle. I'm just like, wow, that's nuts, Leah. Well, well, I, I appreciate that. And the, at the end of the day, the most important part are the things that happen once you stab the gas. So getting to the part of being perfect to even stabbing the gas is one thing, but 
you can't tell yourself what to do during a run because you don't know what it's going to do. So you get out of one car where you're leaving off of your two step and your first instinct of the butt is, are we spinning the tire? How high and how far am I carrying this wheelie? Am I going to need to short shift? And okay, when I bring it back down or do any and pedaling in the factory stock car is much different than pedaling in the top fuel car, hitting second and third, keeping in a groove, which you're sitting on the left side of a car and not right down the center of a dragster. So all of those things need to come natural in that car. And you get in your top fuel car, whew, I'll tell you what, you step on that gas after 14 minutes ago, or some, at one point it was nine minutes ago, uh, where you're, you know, your 60 foots are one tens and you get in your dragster and you're going 819, you, your, your sense of, of reality happens real quick. And, you know, you react to what that car is doing and your steering style and everything. So I attribute it to having, I guess, a lot of runs. But like I said, there's nothing wrong with ever dumbing anything down and uh, getting back to the basics. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and hearing all these stories, I know, you know, before we went on to air, you and I were talking a little bit about sponsorship and, you know, kind of being that, you know, a lot, 90%, I would say 90% of our budget, a good chunk of our budget's already determined, but we're still hunting for those last few races or those last few dollars and things like that. But I want to go back because I, I think like your career, you know, and, you know, reading on you and, and knowing what I know and hearing your story that you've told before, like, I mean, I think it's really impressive you, especially on the sponsorship front, because I mean, you know, your family was in drag racing. And so you had that gateway into the sport, but there came a point where you had to stand on your own two feet, you know, and your family kind of introduced you and they help you get started. But, you know, nobody can afford to go to the professional. Well, I I don't want to say nobody. I mean, there's a select few that, you know, just have that money in the bank where they're like, all right, our kid's going to be a pro. You (laughs) didn't have that. You know, I mean, you had to, you had to make this, I mean, and one thing I really appreciate you, about you in the sponsorship is you've done your own proposals. I mean, you know this industry top to bottom because you've had to start at the ground floor and work your way up. And, I mean, this type of the season, I mean, you know, you're helping. You know you know what DSR is doing. I mean, this is, uh, you know, that, that's got to be, you know, I guess added benefit for the team because you know what they're going through right now, right? I'd like – I appreciate that a lot. Um, yes, I'd, I'd like to think so. I always consider myself always on the learn, just constantly learning and trying to stay ahead of the curve. I identified a long time ago that social media and that engagement and that following is huge because at the end of the day, that is just a different type of media. So understanding our TV ratings and NHRA is definitely has been on the incline and changing production houses to changing, you know, um, Fox Sports 1 and then having all access and Cultivating those numbers is huge, but I know I I know I hear directly from our partners what they need, and digital media is huge, and they all need different things. It's kind of like having um I don't know if you were to have five girlfriends or five boyfriends or whatever, they all they all need a certain amount of return, but the return is different. You know, maybe it's more franchises for Papa John's, and that's a business to business element. Or maybe it's more sales, and that's a that's a customer element. How do we, you know, how do we really resonate the message? So at at the end of the day, we Don Schumacher builds championship winning teams. He's proven that decades. At the same time, we are a media outlet, just like you are. And I guess I don't really like to say those words, but I enjoy what I get to do because I get to spread a message that I am passionate about passionate about Mopar and Dodge and being the epitome of the brotherhood of Dodge, even though I'm a female, (laughs) the the brotherhood of muscle and making muscle and Hemi powered vehicles and, you know, putting Dodge at the number one spot in Detroit, like there's nothing more American. Well, there's a lot of American things, but uh, (laughs) um, I'm passionate about my messages and and my fans are passionate about rooting for our team. So, uh, and I'll say, you know, I've been, I've always been a proponent of, Nobody can ever help you if they don't know you need help. Um, I don't have 2019 locked up for the top fuel car. I've got the majority of funding. I have a couple of really big question marks right now on, on some large partners that, ha- that their industry, you know, is being affected by other elements and, and our racing program, you know, doesn't fit at the moment. So I'm on the hunt right now, DEFCON 1, as I've been in this position multiple times, um, but I will find a way, and uh, and we will be on the track. And you know, there's also opportunities in the factory stock program to add a car. You know, if anybody's ever been watching 
you know, for the past couple of years, this class, seeing how much it's growing, seeing that it's not pro stock. It's not going to be pro stock. We're not going to let it turn into a, you know, a money eating machine. Uh, you know, Schumacher is here to help in that, uh, in that grassroots in the sportsman category. And we have, we have opportunities there too. So I, I'm, like I said, I'm here, I'm actually sitting in what we would call the oval office of Schumacher racing. Cause it's the only place that's quiet and CNC machines aren't running and there's not blowers being wind out and dynoed and fuel benches being turned on. Um, you know, we're, we're hard at it in every way. So I appreciate that you, uh, that you see the grind. Man, Leah Pritchett, uh, definitely a uh, really, really busy one. We're going to continue on with that interview here in uh, just a couple minutes after the break. Before we get to that, though, i got to tell you about one of our amazing partners, and that is GoParts.com. You know, and uh, a lot of people, you drive to the auto parts store when you need parts. But i got to tell you, you're paying too much. Ever since discovering GoParts.com, I'm saving a ton of money on parts. And believe me, I go through a lot of parts. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jimmy, they're online. How's the customer service? Well, I had the same concerns until I use them. Believe me when I tell you, their service is second to none. In fact, 9 out of 10 customers polled said they would not, not only use GoParts again, they'd also recommend GoParts, their friends and family. Look, they've been around for more than a decade. They know what they're doing. It's GoParts.com. That's Go-Parts.com. And uh, when you do that, use slash Jim Beaver. So it's Go-Parts.com slash Jim Beaver. You're going to get an added discount when you check out. So it's Go-Parts.com slash Jim Beaver. Check them out. You'll be glad you did. Go Parts. This is why we wrench. And we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at motoshieldpro.com. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Right now we're in the middle of a three-part interview. I'm going to wrap things up here with uh, Don Schumacher Racing's top fuel pilot, Leah Pritchett. And, uh, man, we've uh, we've bounced all across the board today, and uh, that's going to continue on right now. Yeah. Well, and, you know, there's something funny that I've learned, and I've actually learned about this a, a lot, actually from a, a lot of race car drivers, um, but, because I'm very much the same way. But I know I read something, and you'd said you're you're an introvert that had to turn into an extrovert to make this, you know, to, to make this a career, right? And I'm very much the same thing, and, you know, and obviously I'm doing radio and TV, and that's kind of how I've helped make ends meet on my race program. But uh, I'm very much an introvert. A person that can has had to turn into an extrovert. And I read something you'd said about that, and I go, man, I would have never figured Leah as an introvert because you're so out there and engaged with fans and things like that. But I, I find that really interesting because the more and more you get to know a lot of race car drivers, I mean, I think we're our own breed and we get in our head, especially when we're in the race car, you know, and you shut everything off. But then when you get out of the race car, you've got to be able to relay that information somehow. So you've got to become this extroverted person. You, you're so right. And if you talk with the people that have known me for a long time, you, you, they would, they would say the same thing. Like, you know, I wasn't ever the one like really out there. You know, you take a big group of people. I, I engage in, I'm more of like a dry sense of humor type of individual. Yeah. And when you are the spokesperson for large companies, global companies, you learn that. So I didn't know it would ever be at this extent, but in 2000 and uh, I guess that'd be 2008 through 2010. Graduated Cal- graduated Cal State San Bernardino in 2010, and I realized, man, I'm totally not smart enough to be an engineer or go down that path of crew chiefing. Uh, I have mechanical ability, but I knew I that that wasn't going to work for me. Only way that I could drive a race car is if I could represent well large companies like Shell and Pennzoil. But man, I don't even have the skill set for that. So I put myself through these communication courses and oh my gosh, it was so painful, like (laughs) scared to death. And I'm presenting my helmet, right? Like a topic would be like communication 101, bring in, you know, some, some important object in your life. I'd bring in my race helmet and you get to talk about it. It's supposed to be easy to talk about things you're passionate about. I'm clamming up. I'm making notes. I'm trying to like read off of these bullet points. I can barely even speak to my class, but I did that for four years and then developed proposals and plans around it so that someday I could have that skill set. And I'm not exactly where I want to be. I mean, I think Antron Brown is probably the best ambassador that this sport has. I'm not just saying it because he's my teammate. Tony's been well-versed now for a long time. You know, Steve Torrance, he does a good job of bringing out his personality. And that's awesome. He can because, you know, it's just him and his Capco boys and his, and his family's company. So he can have a little bit more flavor in there. So I am, um, as I'm on this journey of introvert to extrovert, <laughs> uh, it's been, it's been good. I just, I hope to be able to include a little bit more knowledge of what the team is doing and how we're doing it. Because at the end of the day, there's so much that happens behind those ropes that even fans see during the day of how difficult it might have been to make that Q4 session of Pomona 2 because Q3 was going fine and you go to start up and you know what, your hub crank broke. What does that mean? You now have 20 minutes to do a second service and you just did a service and live TV is coming up and you need to make that other round to get more points and you see all your guys just absolutely thrash when it was unexpected. Those are the things and those are the stories that I wish we had more time to talk about. But no one's like nobody ever. Nobody ever goes to the bar and talks about like, "Hey, remember that time we were twenty minutes early to staging lane?" No, a lot of <laughs> stuff happens, and, and a lot of parts break, and there's a lot of like, "Oh crap!" You run over to that trailer, see if they've got that fitting because this one just broke, or I, you know, we didn't know that those rocker, rock, whatever it may be, it is a. Um, it, it's not as easy as it looks with the cars go from A to B down the track. And I hope this year that people, I want the fans to really feel um, how much, how much goes into it. Cause I think that'll open up. Uh, I think that'll open up our market a little bit more. 
Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because we're getting ready and I, we're actually going to go testing the trophy truck here in like the next week. And our first race isn't until the first of February. And I'm going, there's no possible way where this is actually working out this way. Something's going to go wrong because it's going to be the week of the race. And then we're going to have <laughs> something's going to go on. But you're talking about NHRA. And I know you talked about the Capco boys and Steve's become just a dear friend of mine. And I've gone out to a couple of the races this year with uh, with Torrance and, uh, you know, in, in the whole, you know, the, the whole Torrance family and the Capco boys and um, you, you see what happens behind the scenes and you know there's that uh, HBO has that show with the NFL where they follow a team through the preseason they mic all the players up and they, they literally follow what happens in the locker room and in practice and things like that and I feel like knowing what mm-hmm. I know about NHRA now if they were to take like your team and mic everybody up and not really tell the story of the races just tell the story behind the scenes I think it'll blow people's minds what you guys go through in between rounds at any given weekend Oh, I believe it would too. And there's there's been a couple pilot pitches for for those uh, situations, and, and you know I I hope I hope that we're able to do that. What we fight a little bit is the access. So you know our product of of professional drag racing for the NHRA is what happens on the track, and that's a contract between NHRA and Fox Sports and the production company, which is actually NHRA, um, and and. You know, NHRA is trying to show a little bit more of that. So it just becomes how much media are we, you know, how many different avenues are we letting see the product? And I'll, tell, I'll be the first one to tell you right now, we need all of them. We need all of the Hoonigans of the world. We need everything to be streamed on Twitch. We need all access to be able to be opened up more than just 40,000 people that can watch throughout a weekend. The more that we open up the access for people to see our sport, the more eyeballs that for people, if they're genuinely interested, now they have seen it when they didn't tune in before. Like, where else are they supposed to see it? It needs to be coming across their Instagram news feed of that world record setting run that was posted, you know, a half an hour after I just did it instead of me waiting until that show is aired the next day to push it out and even and, and get the footage. So there's a lot of um, tape that we are all pushing through together to be able to 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 be up with the times of things are happening now they're happening across all platforms and us as drivers teams you as well um you know if if it's happening right now it needs to happen right now if it happened 10 10 minutes ago and it was 10 minutes ago nobody cares so it's just it's working on that sort of thing so people ask all the time like man it must be so nice you have an off season what are you going to do for two months (laughs) this is what i'm doing for two months (laughs) right there's no off season uh there's no time to go down south and do any kind of wake surfing right (laughs) uh no no i'm (laughs) i'm trying to spend more time in lake havasu uh Uh, it's, it's created a soft spot in my heart and i'd like to do more on the lifestyle things and and i honestly it's creating content um, was something that I love outside of drag racing, and I don't I don't think that totally sucks to to pick wake surfing to be able to do that. Which of course is not wakeboarding. Wakeboarding you get hurt. Wake surfing the board only hits you in your face, and you have a huge scab on your nose throughout U.S. Nationals. Totally different. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I, I live in Parker, so 30 minutes from Havasu, and uh, I'm on the water all the time. But because, like you'd said, I, I've actually I've done a little wake surfing, but I took up wake skating because of wakeboard. It just my knees couldn't handle it anymore, and there's too many injuries. But like you said, at least with wake skating, the board just goes away, and you fall in the water. And you know what I mean? It's funny because it's funny you talked about the injuries because I've pursued wake skating just for the same exact reason. Wakeboarding just is too injury filled anymore. Right. I mean, there's. I'm sure you could do a lot of damage at nine miles an hour, but it is significantly decreased as opposed to 30 miles an hour and the board is still attached to your feet. And next thing you know, you've got a broken ankle and you can't drive a trophy truck or you can't drive a player. So you can't drive a top fuel car. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, before we get, let you go, I did want to ask you one question because you mentioned the Capco boys. Um, Your husband works for the Capco boys. I want to know what any given weekend is like with uh, with the Pritchett household with uh, with Gary and you. I mean, like, I mean, I'm assuming if anybody's going to get second, like, well, I don't even know second because you've got all your teammates there at DSR. How does that work? Is there bragging rights within the household, Leah? I'll tell you what is most dynamic relationship and situation I've ever (laughs) seen. And I'm even from the inside or the outside. So you always want your significant other, you want the best thing in life for them and for them to be successful. But if their success means that you're not having success, it's a a weird parody. So 
uh, coming, you know, at the beginning of the season's one thing. We're all gaining traction and doing our thing. Going into the countdown, okay. In the countdown, when we both, when I still had a chance at the championship, I'll tell you what, I never wanted to see Steve Torrance and my husband come home with zero <laughs> bonus money more in my life. And, and our team moved forward. Um, now, we did tally it up, and there were 24 events. As we all know on the NHRA Mel Yellow Series, we came home between Top Fuel and then my seven race series and factory stock, 17 Wallies. So 17 times of 24, we, but in the Pritchett household, won a race. That is a lot of celebration. <laughs> Life is not um, bad to be a Pritchett right now. <laughs> no, so, but um, there's a good majority of the time, you know, I'm, I'm with, I'm with my team. You know, we, that means that we lost in the final or anywhere before that. And, um, and we're, I'm going to tell you what, we were, we're always going to be, what could we have done different or yeah. better or faster? How could I have done things different? So you're not in the best of greatest of moods. You're not in the, let me go celebrate somebody else's success, success. So Gary and I, we do a good job of separating that, helping each other. It sucks. We don't get to talk about our race cars at all. I mean, we just, we, we don't. And there's things I know that we're doing that I'm super excited about from an engineering standpoint with Mopar that I would love to go home and be like, hey, but I, yeah. but I don't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you can't. Because... Um, so it's, it's unique. And at the same time, we're on the search for sponsorship for him. He has the opportunity to drive uh, Johnny Lindbergh's alcohol, top alcohol funny car next year, 10 national events, seven uh, divisionals. He would run it all year long at obviously a big coin that goes with it so as i'm pursuing funding uh, for don schumacher racing and r2 programs i want to see my husband chase his champ or you know his his dream too which is driving and he debuted at the u.s nationals last year qualified third went to the semis he's like the epitome of the people's people so it's definitely a full plate um but we're always hungry and we always you know appreciate our fans and our partners and being able to come on and, and speak about what we're doing with you. It definitely is definitely the highlight of highlight of my week. Well, I appreciate that, Leah. It's always fun catching up and, uh, you know, good luck on your sponsorship hunt. And, uh, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, you make it out to have you next time. Uh, ping me, man. It'd be, uh, be fun to get on the water with you sometime. I will. Absolutely. And thanks everybody for listening. And again, um, happy birthday, happy anniversary seventh. And for those that are listening, want to follow along this off season and next year, Instagram, of course, is where I keep it the most real. It's Leah Pritchett underscore TF. And uh, Facebook, Leah Pritchett TF for all of our PR news and media and Twitter. Man, I'm, I'm a little bit behind on Twitter right now, but it's, <laughs> it's still the same. So thanks, everybody, for, uh, for following along. Man, I don't know if you can pack uh, more into an interview than uh, Leah and I did into that 30, 40 minute interview. We, uh, because we had to spice it up for national syndication, uh, I am going to drop that in Project Action this week uncut. So if you want to hear it uncut, uh, uncensored, just, uh, you know, I guess wire to wire, uh, definitely check out Project Action over there on Podcast One this week because uh, we're going to drop that thing in its entirety uh, right there into the slot. But uh, thanks to Leah Pritchett, my friends there at Don Schumacher Racing uh, for everything that uh you know they've done and uh you know all the interviews they booked for us and everything else um you know just some great people definitely you should be following around uh, their social media accounts see what uh you know caps and antron and leah and uh gosh their, their roster of athletes is so big over there at dsr but uh, definitely worth follow on social media so just a shout out to them but uh thank you guys for tuning in to seventh anniversary show we're gonna take a short break uh we come back uh kind of wrap up hour number one roll into hour number two and we got wayne matlock on the line in hour number two so we're gonna take a short break we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. 
I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high-performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down-and-dirty radio show since 2012. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Just wrapping up, uh, I guess, our number one of uh, this seventh anniversary show. Thank you guys for uh, uh, tuning in to uh, the show. Continue to support us and uh, you know help watch us grow. Uh, always like getting feedback from you guys, and uh, you know, and and obviously Leah Pritchett. That was a number one. You know, she's on this week because you guys gave feedback. Said, hey, we want her on the show. So I reached out. Boom, there you go, Leah Pritchett. Um, so yes. Uh, thank Thank you guys. Uh, once again, uh, we're really trying to uh, help grow our iTunes channel. So uh, make sure and go over to Down and Dirty Show or Punch in Jim Beaver there on iTunes. Uh, it should pull up. Hit the subscribe button. And if you have a chance, leave a rating. And if you leave a review, if you leave your Twitter, Instagram, at use the name in the review, I will follow you back on social media. But definitely subscribe to it. We are going to, uh, starting next year, drop a bunch of uh, um, you know stuff throughout the week that's going to be uh, mainly just found on iTunes. So all these other channels that the show isn't on, um, you you know, or that it is on uh, some of those episodes, they're not going to air there. It's just going to be stuff strictly iTunes driven. So uh, you definitely want to uh, go and subscribe on iTunes uh, to keep it uh, locked and loaded for all of uh, the content that we're producing here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And uh, make sure and check out my other show, Project Action, as well. It's where uh, stuff like this uncut Leah Pritchett interview, I'm going to drop that uh, this Thursday on Podcast One on Project Action. So uh, you can get some of the director's cut stuff and some of the amazing other interviews that I do with uh, celebrities and action sports athletes and stuff like that so uh, make sure and check all that out and then my boy Chris Leone uh, keeping the website downandurryshow.com dialed in with all the latest in motorsports news uh, all kinds of content dropping over there uh, we got our Facebook group as well that we uh, share all kinds of news in so I don't know ton of outlets things kind of uh, steamrolled into this like full-blown media company went from uh little online radio show and podcast that man now we've got like all these multi arms on this octopus and things like that so uh you know honestly uh you know wrapping up hour number one here of this uh i guess seventh anniversary show episode number 365 and i uh, just want to tell you guys uh, you know thank you for the continued support uh you know i do this every single week and uh, if it wasn't for you guys tuning in we wouldn't be doing this so uh uh thank you guys seriously man it uh, uh means the world to me that uh, you guys tune in and I'm, my instagram's blowing up people saying 
saying congratulations and like this show wasn't meant to be that you know or pat on the back it was just like hey uh you know you know this is seven years and uh man you guys are you know definitely uh um showing me some love so i appreciate it from the bottom of my heart and uh we are going to take a short break we come back hour number two we got to preview hour number two and uh, we're going to have wayne matlock on the show so stay tuned to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, kicking off hour number two. And, uh, you know, as we uh, roll into hour number two, I guess we got a uh, quick little Dirtfish Rally report for you, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. Uh, but big news coming out of Dakar. Um, Robbie Gordon announced this week he is going back to the Dakar Rally. He's going to have a trio with uh, uh, Cole Potts and Blade Hildebrand of three um, – of his Texeron UTV. So he's going to be competing in Dakar in the UTV division. Uh, you heard him talk about uh, racing UTVs at Dakar in his interview a couple weeks ago on this show. Uh, but uh, all the full details are up. Um, I think Stadium Super Trucks and Planet Robbie's uh, social media feeds have all the details of the press release and stuff like that. But big news, Robbie Gordon and uh, Team America going back to uh, the Dakar rally, uh, along with another guy. Uh, you know, we, we haven't even talked about him too much, but Casey Curry is going to be there as well. So big U.S. contingent, especially in the UTV division. Division there at Dakar this year. So it uh, should be interesting to see the way that shapes up. Uh, Rally America also announced uh, uh, this week uh, that they are shifting gears from uh, promoting actual rally events. Um, We've seen a big shift in events going to uh, the new ARA series um, that they are going to become a rally media company. And now Rally America, uh, if you know, their website gets a lot of traffic. It's been there for for decades. Um, And then they also... um, you know, they, they've got a massive social media following, probably the biggest in North American stage rally. Um, so, uh, yeah, shifting gears to a media company. I'm sure their email distribution list is insane. So it uh, should be interesting uh, to see how that works out and uh, what events they're going to cover and things like that. Um, so, uh, yeah, Rally America shifting gears there into, uh, you know, more of a media type company. And then big news coming out of WRC, Sebastian Loeb. Uh, it has been announced today. It hasn't been formal, so uh, it's kind of rumored, but the announcement is coming later today that he has signed with Hyundai for the World Rally Championship. So uh, uh, no longer racing in uh, World Rally Cross, shifting gears. He's going to be in the World Rally Championship. I'm assuming it's going to be a part-time schedule. He won't be at Monte Carlo uh, because he will be competing in the Dakar Rally. Um, and I know in the past, Loeb has said he doesn't really want to go back full-time to uh, WRC, but he will be competing in WRC with Hyundai in 2019. So big news coming out of WRC, and it's uh, great to see with Sebastian Loeb back there in some type of an effort, even if it is uh, semi-full-time. So that is your Dirtfish Rally Report, brought to you by our good friends at Dirtfish Rally School. Find out more information on the web at www.dirtfish.com. Use a coupon code JBDirtfish for 15% off, and we'll be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3 from General Tire. Make your anywhere possible by visiting GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressive styling with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners. And for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino. On the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount thanks for tuning in to the down and dirty radio show available live online in syndication on networks across the u.s and available internationally on the american forces network welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor i would like to welcome my next guest who i've been trying to catch up with for a couple of weeks now but mr wayne matlock uh, overall utv winner at the baja 1000 and uh, i don't know we'll talk baja here in a second but uh uh because i don't know you had one hell of a run down there but uh, you got to be pretty stoked on uh, on life right now wayne yeah you know things are going pretty well yeah <laughs> It's well, always better when you win. Yeah. Well, he's talking about that. I mean, this wasn't just a win. Like, I mean, this, I know all of us that, you know, race UTVs and I, I see both sides because I've also got a trophy truck in the garage, but like everybody the past couple of years has been taking notice, man, these UTVs, these golf carts are getting a little bit quicker. You know, these, these golf carts are getting a little bit quicker. Right. And uh, now you start to see this transition. I mean, guys like Rob Mack are looking at potentially racing a UTV at some events. Robbie Gordon's kind of done that. You got guys like Reese Millen jumping in them. Um, but you know, everybody knew they were getting faster, but I look at Baja, man, 23rd overall in the four wheel vehicles. That is just insanely fast, Wayne. I mean, these golf carts are damn fast now, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're, we get them going better and better each event. You know, we just keep making, uh, keep making progress. We're always out testing, you know, trying to push. Well, you there, I lost you, I think. I lost you there for a second. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, we're just we we always you know we're trying to push faster and faster every race. So it's all about uh, you know dialing in the drivetrain, powertrain, and getting the suspension dialed in. 
Yeah. Well, and that being said, I mean, uh, you know, I'm just looking at it and it's, it's crazy because, you know, we're talking, you know, you, you would have beat all the class. Well, you did beat all the class 10s. You would have finished second in class one. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, is a lot of people, this wasn't like you weren't the anomaly. I mean, you were fast, you were the fastest guy in the UTVs, but there was a group of drivers that were all quick, you know? So it's not like yeah. one guy is out there and then everybody else is three hours later when they're finishing. You know what I mean? There's, there's quite a few right. guys that are up there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, we, I mean, we had a good run, but you know, I think we beat the second place UTV by like 45 minutes or so, a little more, but the top three UTVs beat the 10 cars, you know, as far as I, as far as I remember looking at the results. So, you know, we beat all the 10s, the 16s, the 12 cars, you know, the seven trucks. So, you know, score keeps putting us behind those guys. And this time we had to come through the whole field and uh, it was one class, one car that beat us. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun doing it, but I think it's a lot safer if they can start us in the, in the right order, you know, and I don't think uh, class 10 cars should start behind us at this moment. I think they're still faster than us as a group. Um, you know, when you get to races like San Felipe, there'll be a couple of them that'll beat us. So, you know, for now, I think we should just start starting behind the class 10 cars. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and that, that's the question here, you know, it's, you know, you know, and I, I see how well, you know, is this just one of those things? I mean, we know on every course the UTVs are getting quicker. I mean, you know, you look at something, uh, well, I mean, you know, I know Kristen had a really good, well, and you've had good runs at Vegas Torino and things like that. I mean, you know, it used to be, you know, dependent on the course, but now it seems like UTVs are, are getting really quick on all of them. I mean, obviously going across a dry lake bed or something like that, a class one car or a trophy truck is definitely going to be leaps and bounds faster in a UTV. Oh, but, yeah. You know, you get into the tight, technical, twisty stuff, and, uh, you know, these things are these things are on rails. Yeah, I mean, you get into a tight, technical section, you'd be hard-pressed to outrun a UTV. You know, in certain sections of the race course, you know, very certain sections, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I believe we can average a faster time through certain sections than a trophy truck. Just because if it's turn to turn and, you know, where you need real nimble, lightweight, we can dive into the turn and accelerate out of the turn real quickly with the four-wheel drive. It's, um, you know, it's quite an advantage on, on some of the course, but then, like you said, you know, across lake beds and long stretches, there's other cars that just, you know, they'll wax us on top speed. Yeah. Well, you know, and all this being said, I mean, uh, you know, we'll talk about, you know, the kind of prep work that's gone into your Baja program and things like that. But, you know, talking about the UTVs, I mean, uh, you know, I know you guys, you know, all of us that, you know, are running, you know, in pro turbo, we've got some really, really nice race cars, but I keep looking at things and, you know, and, and as much as we're pushing the envelope, I, I feel like we're, we're a lot of, you know, we're still running stock engines and things like that. But I look at where, you know, with the rule book, how wide open it is. And I feel like the cars are so fast as it is that rule book, you and I both read it. And I know if at some point somebody's going to go and throw it out the window and just build an unlimited car, which, you know, is really within the, you know, the frame set of the rules, but these things are so fast as they are, we really haven't had to open that Pandora's box yet. No, no, we, I mean, we haven't. And, you know, it's, uh, the truth of the matter is I, th I think we can, uh, you know, all the top drivers out there, I think could probably go out there and do what we do in our pre runners. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're running, you know, my pre runner runs the same cognito suspension. My race car does, you know, same powertrain and drivetrain. It's just my race car is a full tube Jimco chassis. So it's, uh, you know, but it, it's all the same components. So, you know, when now Polaris came out with that Razor S, that thing's a pretty badass car right out of the box. Yeah. You know, there's not much you'd have to do to it. So it's, you know, and I I hope no one, uh, you know, I hope Pandora's box doesn't get opened up anymore because I, I don't think it's going to be good for our sport, you know, as a whole. Yeah. You know, these things are expensive to build, as you know, and expensive to keep going. So the the tighter the, of the lid we can keep on Pandora's box, the better. Yeah. Well, and I, I feel like, you know, looking at the rule set and things like that, you know, I, I, sometimes I, I kind of wonder, I'm like, man, should we, not that anybody's going to have to make any changes, but I think that the way the rules are written, like you said, like nobody's really opened that box. So it's like, man, do, is there a way we can keep this lid on and, and rewrite the rules? So the cars that are out there now, this is about the most we can go. I mean, not that we don't want to go faster, but like you said, at, at some point we don't want to have quarter million dollar builds either, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, uh, one of those things, you know, I think if we keep everything where it's at right now, it's not a matter of, we want to go faster because we can go f as fast as we want right now, but we're limited to drivetrain 
you know, trying to get clutching dialed and stuff like that. So that has nothing. And you know, if you build an unlimited car, you're still dealing with clutching. You're still dealing with belts, you know, no matter how many shocks you put on the corners. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it, and I think it's going to be up to the organizations to come up with, you know, a different setup, a different, you know, right now with score, we're trying to work with getting them to do a pro stock class. Yeah. And, um, you know, to where you have to run stock A arms, you know, stock trailing arms and, you know, basically a stock complete chassis and drivetrain and get manufacturer support behind that class. And we'll see which direction that goes because trying to get new people into the sport, you know, when they go out there and they see a build like mine or, you know, Cognitos or some of the Lone Star cars, you know, like, man, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars to spend on the car after I got the car. (laughs) So it's, uh, we're trying to develop this class with score to where, you know, two guys in the garage can maintain the car, prep the car and, uh, not have a huge investment in it. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And well, and, and things like that new turbo S you'd mentioned, there's not a lot that really yeah. needs to be done to them. You know, really it doesn't. No, you know? no. You know, maybe. it's, it, it comes with long travel suspension comes with internal bypasses and you know, the dynamics live valve setup. It's, yeah. it's a pretty badass setup right out of the gate. And all it's going to take is for a couple guys to start racing that class and catch on. And, you know, people realize they can go down to the dealership, buy a car for 30 grand, put some safety stuff on it and go race. It's, yeah. It'd be a really cool and fun class. Yeah, Wayne Matlock definitely got the uh, the pulse of the UTV industry, that's for sure. Uh, so we're going to take a, a short commercial break here, and uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to roll with more with uh, Wayne Matlock talking about his uh, big Baja win and uh, you know how the Polaris Razors have changed the UTV industry. So uh, looking forward to uh, continuing to catch up with Wayne Matlock here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Thank you guys for tuning in to this 7th anniversary edition of your favorite motor sports radio show don't forget once again go over there subscribe on itunes and uh, we will be back after this on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor like what you hear catch all the back episodes of the down and dirty radio show on apple podcast and be sure to rate review and subscribe want extreme performance reliability and the most fun you can have on four wheels the polaris razor brings it to you but you don't need to take my word for it you can take theirs i'm tanner faust and i choose the polaris razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel what's up i'm ronnie renner and i choose polaris razor because it's the sickest most reliable side by side on the planet what's up everybody heavy d from diesel brothers listen i'm on team razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet I'm R.J. Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. 
Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro learn more at motoshieldpro.com anywhere is possible it's more than just a slogan anywhere is possible with general tires wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra high performance offering all season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind general tire has what you need to get where you're going general tire providing anywhere is possible with the down and dirty radio show since 2012 you're listening to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor all killer and no filler welcome back to the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor seventh anniversary edition uh anyways uh uh, yeah, we're catching up right now with uh, my Polaris Razor racing teammate, Mr. Wayne Matlock, uh, talking about his big victory at the 2018 Baja 1000. Uh, took his Polaris Razor, finished uh, overall out of all the UTVs, um, finished first overall, and then took 23rd overall out of all four-wheel vehicles that I just find absolutely maddening. So, Wayne, so going back to Baja, I mean, uh, you know, I know you and Kristen have, uh, you know, kind of concentrated on the score series this year and racing in Mexico, not to say you guys haven't, uh, you know, run some events here in the States, but, you know, something like Baja, the 1000, I mean, you know, and, and even the 500, you know, it, you know, she had some, some really good success down there, but how are you guys approaching these? I mean, how much time are you spending down there pre-running and things like that? I mean, because, you know, at the thousand this year, you guys were, I mean, you were dialed, Wayne. I mean, did everything go 100%? You guys have any problems? And I mean, how, how was your, you know, lead up? to the race how much pre-run miles did you did you put down there in in mexico <laughs> it's kind of funny the um you know everyone thinks we've been like you know weeks at a time down there pre-running this and that but the pre-run that we had this time um it was probably the worst pre-run i've had in 10 <laughs> years <laughs> as far as getting to see the course there was you know i didn't i didn't get to pre-run you know half the san felipe section we had car problems we had to skip half of that um, didn't, you know, the other stuff we hit at night. So run right down the center of the course, marking dangers and then, uh, shoot from San Quentin up through the coast all the way from San Quentin to Europe. And we never got to pre-run that. So there was, there was a lot of it. I never got to see. Um, but you know, it's like anything else you drive what you see and, uh, and just try to take care of the car and keep a steady pace going. So it was, you know, the pre-running was a little rough, but our race on my end of things went flawless. You know, I down around, uh, um, what is it? Uh, Gonzaga Bay area. Okay. I came over a rise and, and smoked a rock and came over and is either take the rock on the, on the arms and suspension or take out a wheel. So we took out a wheel and, uh, pulled over. I think Daniel, my co-driver was out of the car for about two minutes and we were back on the road. And that was the only unscheduled stop we had. And that's, it was it was pretty good. Other than um, you know some un, well, we did have some unscheduled co-driver changes. Danny and my co-driver got sick, so uh, Josh Rowe had to get in, and he co-drove um, from about 150 to 280. And Daniel got back in, and Daniel got out at like mile 600 again. He was getting way too tired, and then he ended up getting back in about 750. Okay, and we went back into the finish. But it's crazy for you to say, yeah. you know, we didn't have any problems because I know, you know, a couple of years ago it was axles and belts, axles and belts, axles and belts. That was, you know, everybody's like, oh, if we ever get these problems solved, these things are going to be really fast. And it seems like somehow, some way, these problems, we've all just kind of figured it out and dialed in our cars and axles and belts really aren't the issue anymore, you know. And like you said, you guys mm-hmm. had almost a flawless run at the 1,000. You hear guys at Vegas Torino going 500 miles without a belt change. Like, I mean, I feel like, you know, we're evolving, but it's not that the technology he's got better i think we're just figuring everything out right yeah and it's um you know knock on wood here but we really don't have axle problems yeah brothers axles have been really good we haven't uh haven't had any problems like that it's been you know like everyone else belt issues but 
for this thousand, you know, that's why I wanted to get, you know, I, I drew a rear start because I did not want to get out there and set the pace myself. Yeah. So I figured once I had gotten into the lead, it was just a matter of pacing ourselves and drive. You know, we went as fast as the belt temperature allowed us to go. Yeah. And so when the belt temperature was getting hot, we started backing off. So it was, uh, it was good. I mean, we didn't, we swapped a belt at mile 150 when Daniel got out the first time I just had a belt. Just has, and, uh, you there? Lost scheduled you. at mile. F- oh, I'm, yeah. I'm here again. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, we're good. We'll just trim those out. No okay. problem. Yep, it's clear now. Okay. Yeah, so we had a belt and clutch swap scheduled for mile 480. Um, but we pulled in the pit and everything was working good, so I opted to skip it, and we ran it all the way to the finish. Nice. Um, so it was it was good to go. Yeah. So talking about you know looking at this you know obviously wrapped up championship Baja 1000 win Kristen had a hell of a year as well. Um, you know looking at 2019, I mean, what's the plans for you guys? You obviously I know you and Kristen both absolutely love Mexico. You love Baja. I mean that's. Uh, you know, that, that's just what you like to do. We're going to see you run here in the States a bit. I know, uh, you know, talking with her, you know, it, it's always been kind of the question, does she move to turbo? Does she stay where she's at? You know, I think, you know, it, I think there's advantages to both. But, uh, you know, what, what are the plans for you and Kristen for 2019? Um, you know, plans are to go, you know, obviously we're going to run the score series again. And uh, we're going to show up at the Mint and Vegas Torino and try to change our luck around at those races. I've, I've, uh, had some decent runs at the Mint, I think. Well, no, I haven't. I've had one. I got second place the first year I ran it, and uh, I think we lost by like two minutes and change after five flat tires and two blown belts. And the last two years I showed up at the Mint, we DNF'd. So going to try to change my luck around on that one and then uh, race Vegas Torino. But Kristen's going to go um, stay in the, in the natural aspirated class. Okay. Um. She, you know, it's one of those toss-up things. You know, Polaris would really like her to stay in naturally aspirated just so they have uh, someone in that class. Yeah. And you know, we feel like we've got our car per- figured out pretty well, yeah. except for the 1,000. Obviously, we had some issues, but we're kind of out of, out of our control. Um, but, yeah, go ahead, and we're going to go after the score series pretty heavy and hard, and uh, make, we're making some changes to the cars. Um Suspension wise, we're going to add that live valve suspension to our race cars and uh, get that dialed in and, and see what we can do with it. Yeah. Isn't that the funny thing about these classes you're talking about Kristen's car? And I know, uh, you know, I've got one and we did two years of star car and now this next year, I'm just going to go and race it myself and try and go out and get some wins. But it's one of those, like I see the new technology there with dynamics and the turbo S and it's like, you know, every two years, you could probably conceivably build a new race car in UTVs because the technology keeps advancing. But it's like, I'm like, man, we finally got this car figured out. Like, do I really want to go and do that? And I feel like it's like you said with Kristen's car. It's like, do we do we go and run her in turbo or build a new car? Like, you know, we've got it figured out. We know this thing can go out and win races. Isn't, isn't that the toss up? Because, you know, it's like, oh, we could probably build one that's a little bit faster. But then you got to go through all the teething issues again, right? Yeah. Yeah. You got to go through teething issues and. Um, you know, luckily we've been pretty good on that end of things when we do new builds, but it's also one of those things, you know, um, when you're desert racing and long durst racing stuff like we do, it's usually never the fastest car that wins. Yeah. It's the the most durable, <laughs> you know, you got to be able to go when you can go, but it's most durable. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's just even at a thousand, the whole last 200 miles of the race, my speed didn't get over 65 miles an hour. If I was afraid of blowing a belt or breaking an axle and I didn't need to push it. Yeah. So we just cruised. So, you know, she can do, you know, she overalled the 500 and beat all the turbo cars and everything in a natural aspirated car. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's not always about horsepower. It's just about having and all the logistics is done and, you know, everything, you know, in the shop, you know, I think most of these races are won or lost in the shop. Yeah. I completely agree, my friend. Well, it's always fun catching up with you. What's uh, what's this off season look like? You guys going to go out and have uh, have a little bit of fun in your uh, in your play cars? Maybe go on some uh, some runs down in Baja, just have some fun. Yeah, as soon as my I had knee surgery yesterday, so I am uh, currently sitting on the couch with my leg up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm gonna be out of commission for a while here, but yeah, as soon as I'm good to go, we're gonna. I think we're gonna try to get out for New Year's and take the kids down to the desert and. 
go have some fun in the Razors. All right. Well, I appreciate the time, Wayne. Uh, congratulations on the big victory down there in Mexico, and uh, looking forward to uh, catching up with you soon, buddy. Perfect. Yeah, we'll see you at the Met. Wayne Matlock, him and his wife, Kristen, both been guests on the show, uh, I don't know, numerous times at this point. Uh, you know, and just uh, just a, a couple of class act people and, uh, you know, friends of mine and very fortunate, you know, my Polaris Razor family just continues to get bigger and bigger. But uh, uh, those two people, gosh, you want to talk about people that just dominate any race they're in. And, uh, you know, it's not because it's just outright raw speed. They're just smart, man. Yeah, they use their race IQ and, uh, you know, and, and take advantage of the situation for sure. Um, hey, uh, before we go to a break, I got to tell you, though, uh, about our good friends there at GoParts.com. And I know all of us buy auto parts right and you drive to the store and i gotta tell you you're wasting your money you're spending way too much i've discovered goparts.com and i'm saving lots of money on my parts and you know me between uh, all of my race programs and uh, my my play cars i go through a lot of auto parts and i know what you're thinking jim they're online how's the customer service well i had the same concerns until i use them and believe me uh their service is second to none in fact nine out of ten of their customers that's nine percent said they would not only use goparts.com again but they'd recommend goparts to all of their friends and family and i'm talking about the friends and family they like not the ones they don't like uh so you know what they've been around for a decade you know they know what they're doing you don't stay in this business if you know for a decade if you don't know what you're doing and you know what they've teamed up with me and we are offering a massive discount that is right a big discount at goparts if you use the if you use go dash parts dot com slash Jim Beaver, that is my name, go parts dot com slash Jim Beaver, you're gonna get a discount when you check out at goparts.com. Man, nothing's easier. Get your auto parts, boom, they've got all the schematics there. Click on the ones you want, put them in your cart, you're gonna get a discount with my coupon, and then you know, a couple days later, boom, auto parts at your doorstep. You don't have to worry about going to the store and it's going to give you uh you know a, a nice savings of money. So what could be easier, right? So it's go-parts.com. That's go-parts.com slash Jim Beaver. And uh, if you do that, you are going to uh, save a lot of money and you're going to be glad you did. Go Parts, this is why we wrench. That's go-parts.com slash Jim Beaver. Get in on those nice discount deals from our friends at Go Parts. So, uh, yeah, we are going to take a short commercial break. If you're tuning in live, make sure to hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on social media. And uh, we uh, got a, a fun next segment. I'm just going to answer some fan questions and talk about seven years, some of my favorite moments. And I don't know, we'll wrap up the show kind of that way. So be taking fan questions in the next segment uh, at Jim Beaver 15. If you got any questions and uh, definitely uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from you guys. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. A lot more to come here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Seventh anniversary edition. All killer and no filler. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you, but you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound 
Since 1970, KC Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports, beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems. KC Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC highlights the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partner with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at motoshieldpro.com. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. What is going on? Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Still getting used to this uh, brand new fancy microphone I got here. Decided after seven years, it's time for an upgrade a couple of, uh, I don't know, a month or so back. And used to wear like these headset mics with like a boom that came out. And now I've got the, like this rad like thousand dollar microphone hanging down from a boom and uh you know it's got like these suspension shock absorbers around it it looks like literally like they call it a bird cage i guess um i don't know spider web something like that but it's actually really rad it's supposed to make my voice sound better than it does and uh, i don't know i think it does but sometimes i'm i'm so used to like moving around when i talk like my face gets away from the microphone and uh yeah that was uh i guess my random start to this segment here but yes seven years of the down and dirty radio show and uh you know it's been one hell of a journey and you know i get a lot of people i actually did interview with natalie Eva marie uh you actually should really go and check that out also did one with spike ferris and the coincidentally dropped today um but uh you know the interview with natalie we got kind of into my backstory and things like that and uh you know, a lot of this, I got to tell you, is uh, is seeing trends and uh, being at the right place at the right time. And that's not just talking radio. That's not talking motorsports. That's talking life in general and business. And if you want to be successful, even if you work for an employer and you're an employee, um, you know, how do you prove your worth, right? It's seeing trends. It's it's being there ahead of the, doing things that are unheard of, um, doing things that people didn't think were possible. And that's how you get noticed. That's how you move up the ladder. That's how your success in business this was one of those, uh, you know, I wanted to do radio. And uh, uh, at that time, how, how do you, you know, I, radio, getting an AM, FM radio gig for somebody that never done it before, or just done it lightly like me, jeez, that's unheard of, right? So uh, podcasting, internet radio was coming out. And, uh, you know, I went live uh, first episode, we had 27 listeners. And uh, I got to tell you, that was, it was a bad episode, horrid horrid uh michael cash from <laughs> roush yates racing was uh my first guest a uh, guest uh talking about off-road engines and stuff like that and uh um yeah you know what he did solid me not so much my brother was also uh my co-host in the first couple of episodes and things like that and um i don't know it was just it was bad um but i learned and you keep rolling with it and you keep rolling with it and i think that's the moral of the story you know any business entrepreneur whatever you're not going to be a success out of the box i think that's the problem a lot of people think this comes easily right man it, this thing didn't make money until like you're three maybe i think i got my first advertiser at the end of year number one and we're talking like 150 bucks uh we're not talking big money um 
And, uh, you know, so it was one of those where, um, you know, we, we just, you just got to keep at it. You got to keep at it. You got, you hate that term grind because everyone wants to talk about my grind. Oh, I, I, I grind it out. Um, you know, it, like literally it is a grind. I hate that term though. It's so, so garbage, so overplayed at this day and age, but, uh, you just got to keep at it, you know? And, um, I've been able to, uh, you know, it's been tough and there's been sacrifices with this, especially now picking up with this TV work and, and traveling like I do with radio. And now this thing that's spiraled into a media company with employees and things like that. But, uh, you know, I, I think the big, big takeaway from all of this is, uh, you know, you, you just got to hustle. You got to work at it. But um, I've been really fortunate. You know, I, I've been able to travel the country. Haven't done a lot of international stuff. Uh, it's coming. I've had opportunities. The money hasn't been right. So I haven't really done it yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I just keep at it. I keep grinding and, uh, God, there's that word again, but, uh, I've been really fortunate. You know, I've met some of the most amazing people. I've seen some of the most amazing things, places in this country, motorsports events that a lot of people don't get to. Uh, I've been able to, you know, become friends with people that I looked up to and idols, guys like Travis Pastrana and Ken Block. I mean, guys, uh, you know, I looked up to, and now all of a sudden, you know, they're friends of mine, close friends. Um, you know, and to know people like Leah Pritchett, who we had on today, you know, who is, uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal race car driver and drag racer, you know what I mean? And, and be able to, you know, have those candid conversations like we did today. Um, it's just, uh, amazing. And, uh, you know, and, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, like, the thing is, is the only way this works is, is if you guys that are listening right now, listen in and tune in and, uh, you know, and give your feedback, because if you guys don't, I don't know if anybody's listening. I don't know if anybody's paying attention. Um, I just don't know, but I do now, you know, so, um, you know, because you guys give me feedback and you let me know, Hey, we thought that sucked. Uh, and I, uh, you know, Hey Jimmy, that was awesome. You know, and I, you, internet's brutal, man. You guys, you guys are a tough crowd. I do something you don't like. I hear about it. I've been memed. I've been, uh, um, you know, I, I've been, you know, had virtual stones thrown at me. Um, it hasn't been an easy ride, but, uh, we've just continued to grind it out. And once again, there's that word and, uh, you know, we're here today and, um, you know, looking forward to next year, 2019 is going to be a fun year. We're going to switch it up. We're going to do some different stuff next year. We're going to bring back the Facebook, uh, live stream, at least the audio version of it. See how that goes. Mate, we're going to bring in video at more events. Uh, we're going to go back. I'm going to. I, I'm planning on doing two shows. I don't know when we'll roll out the second one, but uh, we'll have the Down and Dirty Radio Show, the national show that you're listening to now be dropped every week just like it does but then every single week we are also going to uh, drop a second show about uh, an hour long that is off-road only so going to go back to the roots a bit you know we've started covering NHRA and, and uh, IndyCar and stuff I like uh, in addition to off-road but uh, you know the fans have spoken they want off-road only and so we're going to do one of those uh, every single week you're going to get 32 minutes to an hour of off-road only talk and uh, we're going to bring in people like my friend Matt Martelli and Rob McCachron and Keegan Kincaid and Tiffany Stone. We're going to do some rad stuff, interview some rad people, talk about events from all over the country, overlanding, mudding, rock crawling, desert racing, short course, all things off-road. So uh, looking forward to um, to being able to do that for you guys, too. So uh, that's definitely coming up. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, just some fun stuff, you know. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And it's all about your guys' feedback. You know, it's about the fan feedback, the fan engagement. So, uh, you know, if you guys have any ideas you'd like to hear, you'd like to see, uh, you'd like me to talk about, um, as always, hit me up on social media, DM me, um, you know, but uh, let's keep the lines of communication open for sure. So I uh, also wanted to mention, uh, you know, before we roll into uh, some news, some questions you guys had, uh, I will be out at ERX Motor Park in uh, uh, Elk River, Minnesota, right outside of Minneapolis, St. Paul this weekend. I will be hosting the uh, the X Games qualifiers, snow bike qualifiers. Um, you know, I guess you win there, you take a podium there, you're going to go straight to X Games in January. So I'll be out there hosting. If you guys are in Minnesota, make your way out to uh, the snow bike uh, event. Uh, there at ERX Motor Park. It's Saturday from 11 to 4. They're going to have uh, two main events. Each main event is going to take riders to uh, X Games. So uh, looking forward to uh, 
I, I don't know. Looking forward to being out there. I've done it a couple years now and seen some extremely talented individuals, uh, some guys that may have flown under the radar, uh, make their way to X Games and, and do well and take medals. So it's kind of fun. Snow, gr- snow bike cross is, uh, you know, it's snow bike racing is a new format and it's a new industry and we don't know a lot about it yet. We're learning as we go, but uh, uh, it's fun to watch. It's fun to see, uh, you know, the guys in the next generation of uh, action sports and racing power sports stars that come out of that. So uh, worth the trip. Uh, weather's supposed to be in the 30s in Minnesota, which is surprising. I think a couple of years ago when we did it, it was like negative 15. So, uh, yeah, weather should be good by, quote, Minnesota standards, not Parker, Arizona standards. It's about 70 degrees here today. Uh, but, yeah, if you're going to be out there, uh, make your way out there to ERX Motor Park. Check it out. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be doing a Facebook Live or not, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, worth, you know, we're checking out. I will be on the mic uh, for sure out there. So, uh, yes, that's going on. Also, just got news from um, – uh, actually, press release as we're on air. Maybe we'll get Matt Martelli on next week to uh, to chat about things. Um, but uh, they they uh, the Martellis and Mint 400 uh, actually just sent me a, a nice little press release that the Mint 400 is going to a two day racing format. So last year they made contingency two days. This year they're making. The race two days, so it's four days. I used to have everything packed into two days. Now it's four days, uh, which is uh, amazing. They've got uh, – I'm just looking. Sorry, I'm choking on something here. Um, but, yeah, so the schedule, they're actually bringing motorcycle classes back. They're going to race on Saturday morning. And Saturday afternoon, they're going to have Trophy Light, some of the limited classes, and some of the limited class UTVs, uh, Jeep Speeds and stuff like that. They're going to race on Saturday afternoon. Then Sunday, it is a big dog day. Uh, So Sunday morning, it's going to be Class 10s. UTV Pro Turbo and UTV Naturally Aspirated, Ultra 4s, uh, 7200. We're going to be racing in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we'll also be racing Trick Trucks, Class 1, 6100, uh, 8,000, 6200. So the big dogs, Sunday afternoon to cap off uh, the amazing event there at the Mint 400. So, man, big, big, big day of uh, or week of racing. I mean, things start Wednesday, right? They've got the downtown parade. Then Thursday, there's contingency and the downtown uh, there on Fremont with the uh, pit crew challenge and all that. And then you move on to uh, uh, Friday, more contingency. Uh, you know, you have time trials Thursday, Saturday racing, Sunday racing. Oh, this is bonkers, man. This is like you need to take a week off of uh, uh, a week off of your life to go to the Mint 400 now. But uh, we will definitely have uh, Matt Martelli on sometime soon uh, to talk about this. And uh, I don't know, that's some massive, massive news for uh, for the Mint 400. And uh, actually some really, really solid good changes as well. Uh, also, I've been getting... A ton of questions on the Parker 425 and King of the Hammers. Now, we all know that uh, KOH, King of the Hammers, has uh, has added in uh, that, you know, that trophy truck invitational race. That is going to be, uh, I believe, Wednesday um, of uh, Wednesday of Hammers Week, right? So uh, Parker 425 um, is going to be Saturday. Now, that was always a big, massive trophy truck draw, and now three days later, you're going to have the King of the Hammers event. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people wonder, hey, is Parker done? Has it failed? Hey, look, you know, tro- trophy trucks just, you know, and th- this thing at Hammers is just trophy trucks, right? So uh, trophy trucks or trick trucks, as they are in Best in the Desert, are, um, you know, it's... It's a small, small thing, you know. I mean, in the big scheme, I mean, Parker, we pulled 250 entries, right, four-wheel vehicles, um, and 50 of those are trophy trucks. So um, not all the trophy trucks are going to race hammers. Not all are going to get invited. Some aren't going to do it because uh, it's a big entry fee, and, uh, you know, you don't have a chance to win. So why go to a one-off event, right? So um, my prediction, you know, normally we have 250 entries at Parker. Um, you know, we're not, we're still going to have all the class one 6100s, all those type vehicles. I would say that, uh, you know, probably the realities are maybe we have 210 entries at Parker. Uh, we lose maybe 40 trophy trucks. Uh, we're still going to have, I would say we're going to have 10 to 10 to 10 to 20 trophy trucks racing at Parker or trick trucks. Um, a lot of these teams have two trucks. They're only going to run one at the hammers event. They'll run one at Parker. Um, but I, I think we're still going to have, uh, 
I'd say we still have 15 to 20 trophy trucks at Parker. It's still going to be a trophy truck race, still going to have a turnout, um, but I just think uh, there's going to be less, and, uh, you know, obviously the Hammers event's going to pull some. So, um, yes, it will be affected. Parker will still be a massive event. If you're looking at bringing your camper out, coming in and checking it out, Continuously will still be big. You're still going to have a lot of entries there. Uh, still going to have some of the big names that have two trucks. They're going to run both. Uh, I don't think that, uh, you know, there's uh, – a lot to worry about. I mean, if you're an unlimited truck fan, absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's definitely going to pay a crimp in your you know in your game if you're just coming to see the trucks. But if you enjoy off road racing in general, I think there's a lot uh, to take in at the Parker 425 uh, this year. And uh, just looking, we got the Parker 250 coming up too. That's in January as well. So I don't know. Racing starting early this year, man. We got uh, uh, Parker 250, Supercross coming up. We got a lot of stuff on the horizon. We haven't talked about that. So uh, next week, we are definitely going to be talking about that stuff. It's going to be a fun last episode of the year. Uh, maybe not a lot of interviews. Maybe just have a lot of call-ins and uh, you know some fun uh, Martellis. Maybe we'll have uh, Tiffany Stone call in and uh, just catch up, talk about uh, bench race talk about some of our favorite moments of uh, 2018 and uh, look forward to 2019. I think uh, uh, we'll just have a fun, fun episode uh, next week and maybe a little shenanigans and uh, I don't know. Um, like I said, lots of listener questions and we're just going to have fun with it next week. So uh, that's what I'm thinking. So uh, yeah, we're going to take a short break. We come back. We're going to wrap things up here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor um, and uh, this special 7th anniversary edition. Uh, so thank Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back after this uh, short break. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally 
on the American Forces Network. All right, and we are back here to uh, wrap up episode number 365, the seven-year anniversary of the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Big shout-out to uh, Leah Pritchett and Wayne Matlock for being my guests today. Uh, and uh, thanks to all you guys for tuning in listening to me ramble for these seven years. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't see us stopping rambling anytime soon. So, uh, uh, yes, uh, we're going to keep rolling with things here. And uh, thank you guys, though, once again. I uh, can't do it without you guys. Uh, at Jim Beaver 15 on social media, hit me up. Let me know if you got any guest suggestions, ideas, what you want to see next year, what you like, what you don't like, love me, hate me, whatever. Um, love to hear from you guys. Join that Facebook group as well. We got all kinds of motorsports news and content dropping there. Um, yes, check out uh, downandirtyshow.com for all the web content. My boy Chris Leone keeps pumping out there uh, for you guys to consume on uh, on the web. If you're a motorsports fan, you definitely ought to uh, bookmark Down and Dirty Show. Is that even a thing anymore? Bookmarking websites i know at one point it was you bookmark sites like do people even bookmark anymore man that was like a throwback term from episode number one right bookmark our website jeez i i'm gonna have to ask that's a question for next week do people even bookmark websites maybe that's what we'll do what has changed in seven years yes i think that will be a segment next week what has changed in seven years um but uh yes uh check us out on the web uh if you're looking for a coupon code don't forget it's uh jb dirtfish for 15 percent off at dirtfish rally school and uh the the web address is go-parts.com slash jim beaver to get that discount on all your auto parts needs there at go parts uh i'll be in uh, minnesota X Men Game Snow Bike Qualifier this weekend. If you're in Minneapolis, in southern Minnesota, uh, I guess eastern Minnesota, make sure and head over to ERX Motor Park. Uh, rad place there. We have the Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League uh, event there as well. But rad place, all things motorsport. It's a cool place. My type of place. Anyways, uh, big thanks to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Super Vision Wheel, Casey Highlights, Gibson Exhaust, Dirtfish, Optimus, O. Uh, Optimus Starters, Moto Shield Pro, GoParts.com, and the Blue Water Resort and Casino for all of their support. Uh, thank you guys for all your support of the show. And, uh, man, we will uh, keep it dirty here. We'll keep uh, uh, pumping out these episodes. And uh, you guys keep tuning in. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you next week. Be safe. As always, game on. Game on.